Hi everyone, in today's video we're taking a look at some of the biggest AI updates of the week. Google just dropped a ton of news at Cloud Next, OpenAI launched a new model GPT-41 and the EU finally revealed how they plan to invest $200 billion into AI. And of course, by the end of the video, I'm going to do a new round of super fast flash stories with the smallest yet most relevant updates in the AI world. We need to talk about Google Cloud Next 2025 because this event was absolutely packed. And honestly, it didn't feel like a cloud event at all. This was pure AI showtime. Let's break down the most impactful updates in just two minutes. First, deep research. Now it runs on this new monster of a model, Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental. And let me tell you, I tested it against OpenAI's deep research and this thing is really good. I think it's even better. But all these AI, all these models, all these agents, they need power. And you've probably seen all the headlines about how crazy the energy consumption of AI is going to get. That's exactly why Google is building its own chips. And yes, NVIDIA chips are amazing, but they are not optimized for specific tasks like inference. And for Google, inference is probably the most critical part because they have to run these models efficiently every single second. And if you're not familiar with the term inference, don't worry. It just refers to the models answering you when the models actually get to work. And that's where their new chip, Ironwood, comes in with a huge leap compared to its predecessor. 10 times faster, which means it consumes way less energy by being able to deliver more. By doing so, these chips also enable things like real-time conversations with almost no lagging, just like talking to a real person. And this is a massive advantage in the AI race. Whoever builds the best inference chips wins speed, wins cost, and locks competitors out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see other tech companies come out with their own chips optimized for their own models. But Google also talk a lot about AI agents. And you are probably tired of hearing that 2025 is going to be the year of AI agents. And if you're still wondering what's an agent, well, you are not the only one. The main difference is that agents do actual stuff for you. For example, they can create things, they can send emails, deploy apps, whatever you ask them to do. But until now, building an agent was kind of a pain. You have to stitch together prompts, glue APIs, manage memory, tools, not fun. But we have seen a rise in SDK for building agents. We saw OpenAI release their SDK just a few weeks ago, and Google is following along with their own agent development kit, which is just a framework that makes development much easier. However, the really exciting part is that along with their new SDK, Google has also released a new protocol for inter-agent communication, and it is called the agent-to-agent -agent protocol. And here's the thing though, a single agent is great, but real enterprise processes actually need a lot of different steps and different experts, which one agent alone can never do. So you actually want those agents, those experts to communicate to each other. But until now, it was also kind of a pain. And with A to A, they talk to each other directly, pass things around and can even reject some results and send them back for revision. It's like building a little AI production line that actually runs on its own. And just like MCP changed how agents interact with your machine or server, A to A might change how agents interact with each other. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to check my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use MCP to build software on your machine. Link below. Oh, and by the way, Google has just confirmed that they will also support MCP. This is huge. I cannot wait to try it out. All right, let's talk about OpenAI because they just launched GPT-41, their new flagship model. For now, only available through API, which means you cannot chat with it via chat GPT. But this makes totally sense because this model was built for agents. See, agents don't just chat with you. They work for you. They search across long documents. They read huge code bases. They plan, they act. And for that, they need to be able to handle massive amounts of information in one go. And that's exactly where OpenAI always felt a bit behind compared to Google especially because Google have been supporting a million token context window for a while now. 
And this is just a fancy way to say that Google's AI is capable of processing massive amounts of information in one go. But now GPT-41 changes that. This thing also supports 1 million tokens, finally. Because if you follow the channel, you know how much I've struggled in the past with models running out of context. But this solves a lot of that pain. Now, important to say, GPT-41 is not a reasoning model like O3 Mini High, and O3 Mini High is still better at coding, math, and problem solving. But 4.1 gets really, really close, which is super impressive. Plus, it's crazy cheap, way cheaper than 4.0 and much more powerful. That's why OpenAI is already depreciating GPT-4.5 because this new model basically replaced it. Soon enough, we will be seeing it on ChatGPT as well. Let's move to Europe because the EU just shared more details about their massive AI investment plan. You might remember a couple of months ago, the EU parliament committed to an invest of 200 billion in AI. And now we are finally seeing how this money will be spent. It's called the AI Continent Action Plan. And I'm pretty excited about this because Europe has been, well, kind of slow in this AI race. We don't have tech giants like Google, Meta, or Amazon throwing billions on AI overnight. And in Europe, investors are much more conservative. We are not used to seeing headlines like company O just rise 2 billion. That just didn't happen here. And yet, AI startups need this crazy funding to even have a shot. So back to the AI continent action plan. 10% of that money, so around 20 billion, will go into building up to 5 gigafactories, which is just massive data centers designed for training complex AI models. These gigafactories will be built as public-private partnerships, open for companies, startups, and research teams to use. And that's amazing, because right now, if you want to train a frontier model, you basically need to own the data centers. And that's impossible for most European companies. And of course, it wouldn't be Europe without regulation. But to be fair, regulation here is not about slowing down innovation. It's about making sure that the AI actually improves people's lives and respects our values. And it is not used for bad things like spreading misinformation. And that's why the AU is also launching something called the AI Act Service Desk. Basically a system to help companies navigate all the AI regulations. I am hoping this is going to be some kind of super smart AI help desk, like a team of fine-tuned agents guiding you through compliance and not a thousand people sitting in Belgium. But the last part of the plant is talent. And honestly, the talent is already here. Many of the researchers who pushed AI forward over the last decade come from Europe most of them even from German. But the sad reality is the big breakthroughs happen elsewhere, mostly because of funding. And I really hope this plan can change that because Europe deserves to have its own AI infrastructure, its own agents, its own models, built not only with European talent, but also with European values. Let's see where this goes. Perfect, now to end the day, here are the flash news of the week. Meta launched Llama 4 with models named Scout, Maverick, and Behemoth, claiming they outperformed GPT-4 and Cloud3. But in practice, they suck. They are better than Llama 3, but far behind GPT-4 or Cloud. And now there is a lot of controversy by allegations of benchmark manipulation, which Meta denies. Andy Jassy, the CEO of Amazon, wrote his annual letter to shareholders and emphasizes that AI is central to Amazon's future across every business area. They're already working on over 1,000 Gen AI projects and scaling AWS to support this. Stanford just dropped its most anticipated AI index report for 2025, and the numbers are worth noticing. AI adoption in business jumped to 78% in 2024, up from 55% the year before. The US still lead with 61 frontier models launched in 2023, and while open source is rising, the biggest models remain close, definitely worth checking out. Anthropic just released a report on how students are using Gen AI. Based on a survey of over 4,000 university students, the main use cases are summarizing content, generating practice questions, and studying. Computer science students are the most active group. If you're in education, this is worth a read. The CEO of Shopify sent a bold memo to the employees. Use AI or explain why not. 
Teams now have to prove that a task can be done with the AI before requesting more headcount. The message is clear. AI first is the new default. Runway released Gen 4, its new video model, and it's impressive. They manage character consistency across frames. If you're into AI video generation, this is a leap forward worth watching. For those who care about privacy, Dr. Go just launched its own AI power search. No tracking, no logging. You can ask GPT-4 O Mini or Cloud 3 Haiku anonymously. This is classic Dr. Go, private by default now in the AI era. Thanks for watching. As always, you will find all the links in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.